D, welcome to G E and D. Would you mind sharing our, with our viewers who DJ Wright is? No problem. Yeah. DJ Wright, I'm an artist from Los Angeles, California. Mm -hmm. Grew up in a single parent home like most of us 80s babies have. Got in the streets, I played sports as a child. Got in the streets and got in trouble until I discovered my talent. Recorded music and learn how to make, I learn how to monetize my talents. And at this point in my life, I'm in the process of establishing financial uh, stability by doing for myself and not going out and working for a job like most of us do with our life. Okay, so can you tell me about what life was like as a child? You say you grew up in a single parent household. Yeah. And how did you end up ended up in the streets? It's kind of just by fascination, you know. My uncles were in the streets already, or hustlers. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you see you see hustlers hanging out in front of your apartment building, mm -hmm. and you see nice cars, jewelry, the girls. Mm -hmm. You want to be a part of that. You want you want that type of attention, so to speak, as well. You mm -hmm. know. And that's pretty much how it happened. Yeah, and how, and then from the streets, did you, and from you got in trouble in the streets, do you want to elaborate more about on that? Yeah, I got, in, I got in trouble. Not as much as my peers would do, because I was still kind of like operating on fear in most of my endeavors. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've been, in jail, I've been arrested and been in jail about 10 times. Mm -hmm. um, and can I, you say why? Petty stuff, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, Funny to appear, uh, vandalism charge or whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. Smashing on the hotel room, that's about it. Like, mm -hmm. Most of the stuff I did, I didn't really get caught. Cause like I said, I operate on fear, so behind that fear, like caution as well. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So I really wouldn't do it if I wasn't sure I could get away with it. Right, and what was life like when you in jail? What is your experience like there? It's like, it's like a, a, the dog pound for a human, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The worst part of jail to me personally is the holding tank. You first get in there and it's 20, 30, I don't know if I can cuss or not, 20, 30 niggas in the holding tank. Yeah. And you sit in the holding tank 12 hours, pissing in front of you and all that, it's cold. It's, mm -hmm. I, I just don't like it, you know? I don't yeah. like it. And I, I recommend anybody who's doing anything that can get themselves put in that place to, you know, switch the product around, man. Sell something that you, they ain't gonna come put you in the handcuffs for. Right. Yeah. That's not the place to be. Can't do nothing in there. Did you learn anything, any lesson from being in there? Mm, that I don't want to go back. That's about it. Mm -hmm. You know? And um, shit, honestly, I learned it's not that ain't the place for me to be. You feel me? I feel like I got too much to offer the world and to be locked in a cage somewhere. You feel me? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And did you say when, when you were in jail, did, did you meet other people? in jail and what was the experience like outside of you know the hardship or the yeah, roughness of it you, you make friends in jail mm -hmm. you make friends from people from different neighborhoods that you normally wouldn't mm -hmm. socialize with mm -hmm. I, I, I was locked up in my cell i had some muslim it was muslim in my cell with me mm -hmm. and you know they would pray they would you know teach Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Trying to put me up on their teachings and, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I had an open ear to listen. Mm -hmm. And I, I learned a lot from them and I was inspired to learn more even right. after mm -hmm. leaving the cell. And from there, I began my own, I don't know, uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if I want to call it a spiritual journey, but it is, but it's more so like a, a consciousness journey. Right. And, you know what I'm saying? I, I became a, more of a reader, mm -hmm. I became more of a writer became more intelligent mm -hmm. and somewhat developed a sense of purpose in life right. to have some type of impact on the world and try to, you know what I'm saying, detour that that mm -hmm. youngster that's, that's heading in the direction I was heading in, that yeah. hold on, hold on, homie, that's not where you want to go, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, you might want to look at things this way, change your, change your mind, you know? Oh, okay. So basically you're saying even though you, you had like the condition was not the best or the condition that you would want right. 
However, you have learned something being in there. You, it has basically transformed you. Exactly. You find out who you don't want to be or which path exactly. you don't want to travel. And you have also developed your spirituality, your stronger spirituality. Yeah, absolutely. You want to elaborate a little bit about that and how developing your spirituality has actually helped you to be who you are today. Definitely. I, I began my spiritual journey through Islam. You know, I grew up in a Christian household where mm -hmm. you know most of it's Christian because that's just what we just that's just what it is. Okay. But you know, I never really went to church, I never really prayed, never really read the Bible. So I, mm -hmm. I really wasn't a Christian. It was just like the culture. Yeah. Right. So yeah. but Islam I consider my faith my faith base. It was the beginning of me understanding spirituality in the first place. Mm -hmm. And um like I said, you know what I'm saying, just through development and consciousness, you begin to see life from a spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm. I don't really read the Quran anymore. I don't pray five times a day, mm -hmm. things like that. I, can, I, I just see things from a different light, though. Yeah. Right. Maybe through my music. You can hear it through my music. You can hear, you just catch me in my, in, in my intellectual moments. Yes. Can you tell me more about your music and what are you working on today? Yeah, I'm working on a, I'm working on my first official album right now. It's gonna mm -hmm. be called Shit Won't Be the Same. Okay. And it's kinda of like the theme music or the soundtrack to a phase of my life where I'm going through right now. Mm -hmm. Where like I said, I'm turning nothing into something in a way, you know, like I'm I went to Miami, I didn't have no money in my pocket mm -hmm. or anything. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have no aspirations of getting a job. It was I worked at the post office before this. Right. And I was fired from my job because I got into a fight with three guys jumped me. Oh. And I, I lost my job because I was defending myself. Oh. And, um, oh. you know, just that just made me think, like, I never allowed myself to depend on a job or anybody to the point where it's up to their, their decision that I get paid the next day again. So I say, what could I do? And like any other time, I would go back to music. Mm -hmm. This time... Which is your passion? It's my passion. My passion so I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. So, I never really made m money off of music, though. I would go to, I would go to studios and I'd record whole albums, mm -hmm. maybe even do a couple of videos and throw it online just for a few hundred to a thousand people to look at it. Yes. Which to me was like a waste of time in a way, or mm -hmm. a wasted product. Like I said, um, my face base was Islam, though, and Nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. We got the final call newspaper, and we would sell a newspaper in the street. Right. You know, on the corner and stuff like that with the bean pies and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And through, through, that, through, through that form of sales, I, I learned that I could sell anything, and it's not necessarily what the product that I'm selling that people are buying. Right. they buying the enthusiasm and the, and the, and the passion and the, the, the energy behind that person, you know what I'm saying? Behind that product, yes. it's making them reach in their pocket and purchase something that they're probably not even going to read. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I took my CD mm -hmm. and I pressed it up mm -hmm. and I hopped out there in the street with the same sales approach. Right. And was, I've been doing good. Yeah, and how long have you been selling your CDs? I've been doing that since July 11th, 7-Eleven. And how was the sale been for you since? Sales is good. You know, I'm moving yeah. about 500 to 1,000 a week. Yeah, and you yeah, mind, you, do you mind sharing how you go about selling Yeah, I, you know, I hop in the street, like, you know, how people sell roses. Yeah. Or, or, or even, you know, the, 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 the panhandler drug, drug addict that'll walk up to your car and, and while you're at the intersection. Mm -hmm. That's how I sell my music. Right. And through that through that type of hustle or grind, mm -hmm. I, I began to understand life a lot better too. Yeah. As far as life's abundance. Right. You know what I'm saying? So life is abundant. You feel me? I wake up in the morning, I got goals. Mm -hmm. I don't have the same fears as I did when I first started. Like, mm -hmm. and if I don't, if I don't make this payment in this room and be out in the street, I don't feel that way no more. Yeah. Do you, do you mind telling me more about that though? How, how, what time you get up in the mornings and how you do your grind? 
and and moving from state to state. Do yeah. you mind elaborating yeah. more? I get up every morning about four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I get myself together. Mm -hmm. And I try to be on the block at sunrise. I'm sipping my coffee on the block like people sipping their coffee in the break room about to go punch the clock. I'm getting ready to get myself mentally prepared for the nose, mm -hmm. for the for the for the for the lump for the to endure mm -hmm. hours of grinding and, 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 and discipline that I gotta apply to myself that a job would put in place for me. Mm -hmm. Like when you go to when I have having a job Get your two hours, then you get a break, then you get a lunch, then you get a break. Mm -hmm. You got to be there on time. Mm -hmm. And when you work for yourself, people tend to get lazy on themselves. Right. Oh, I don't feel like I'm going to work today. Or I don't, I don't want to leave early today. Mm -hmm. So I have to apply the same discipline as if I had somebody standing over me. Right, right. To so, my own hustle. Mm -hmm. So basically you're out every day? Every and day, six how? days a week. Sundays I do charity work. Oh, okay. That's good. And um, I go different states. Mm -hmm. Like I'm in New York now. Mm -hmm. I'm in New York for a month. Okay. Prior to this, I was in Miami. Yeah. You know, I pretty much started in Miami. Like DJ Wrights, the mm -hmm. artist, is from Miami. They started like, in Miami. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm from Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Personally, but. So you you left Los Angeles to um, Denver. To Denver to for a job. For a job, and then you left the job and moved to Miami. I went to Miami. I always wanted to go to Miami since I was a kid. It's always been some type of. Mm -hmm. Affinity or attraction, looking right. at Miami on TV and stuff. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna just go. I was at a point in my life I had nothing to lose. I was sleeping in my car. I was homeless, mm -hmm. and that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah, and how was that? Because when you when, when pressure can burst pipes or make diamonds, that's my one of my favorite sayings. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would say it lightly until I actually felt the pressure that it mm -hmm. is required to create that type of creativity within my, myself, you feel me? Mm -hmm. I, mean, you get to, I got to see what I was really made of because, mm -hmm. you know, so I grew up in a single home, like I said, mm -hmm. my mom was the type of person where she was real cautious and any, any type of creative ideas and aspirations, I would hear the consequences or the, or the, 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 the negative the, aspect of it, the more first. conservative yeah. aspect. Yeah. That's what I would hear first and, mm -hmm. and not realizing that young that I'm already discouraged. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. finally, I had to, at a point in my life, I, I grew up my life thinking that way. Everything I would think of, to be cautious. I would be like thinking, I'm talking myself right out of it as I'm talking myself into it. Yeah. So, I mean, I have nothing to lose and, nothing, nothing, and no other option but to stand up and face whatever obstacles in front of me. Mm -hmm. I get it to understand that fear really is just an illusion. Right. And that's what I'm saying, like, through this act, through, through this type of hustle has enabled me to see life differently on a mm -hmm. spiritual level as well. Like, I see every decision that a human makes is either rooted in faith mm -hmm. or is rooted in fear. Mm -hmm. And decisions is ultimately what determines our fate. Right. So, you know, the, the more I'm exercising my faith, the more dormant fear becomes in my spirit to where I can jump on a plane and go anywhere right now with no money in my pocket and know that when I get there, I'm going I'm to come up. Yeah. I feel like you can put me anywhere on the plane and I'll double my worth right now. And mm -hmm. that's the beautiful thing about it. Right. Being fearless. And I, that's what I want to encourage anybody out there is to, you know, tap into yourself find your gifts, mm -hmm. and when you get an idea in your mind, it starts with that thought. When you get that feeling behind it and you believe it and you feel it, you've already began the process of manifestation. Just mm -hmm. go, execute, no fear. Right. You know what I'm saying? And life will show you a lot of a lot of things that a lot of us don't have an opportunity to see. Yeah, open many doors. Yeah. Many doors. So do you want to tell me, um, what future plans you have for your music? And yeah. My future plan is, see right now, I'm, I'm, I'm moving my mixtape. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much music that I've basically been working on for seven years. Mm -hmm. It's like my own greatest hits. I can't call it the greatest hits because yeah. nobody ever heard it. But yeah. it's my best songs I made over seven years. Right. And 
I, I ain't gonna lie, I started doing this for money. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I was in a survival mode. Like, what could right. I do to make some money? Let me just do this and I'm gonna just flip these CDs real quick and, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. get myself together. But the feedback mm -hmm. from, you know, the customers or the fans or whatever you wanna call them, mm -hmm. let me, like, you know, I can do this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and created the avenue. Now I created an avenue to where I can sustain myself through this music and keep the going and keep going in, in the process and I don't have to do, apply any of my time and attention elsewhere mm -hmm. just for money. Right. So my next project, um, it's going to be my first official album. It's going to be available on all streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have videos, YouTube videos and all that, like everybody, you right. know what I'm saying, merchandise, mm -hmm. all that. And when you expect it to release this, this new I'm album? I'm expecting it to release in January 1st, 2019. January 2019? It should be up for pre-order December 1st on, yeah. their, on their all platforms. And and the, the music, because I got your CD and I must tell you, it's very, very inspirational and I find it very deep and positive. Right. I really liked it. Can you tell me a little about that one, the, the CD that you have out now? Yeah, feel nigga shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I basically, like I said, I tried to... I tried to keep myself out of the box mm -hmm. by the way I sequenced the, the music. Because mm -hmm. I got a consciousness side. It's like, you know what I'm saying? You basically get my journey, you get my whole journey, my whole experience of mm -hmm. me. Transition from one yeah. level to the next. And it's like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I was never able to be the type of artist mm -hmm. that could just use his imagination and create uh, some shit to sound good. Mm -hmm. I, always have to, I always have to come from my. My feelings, yeah. you feel me? My yeah. passion mm -hmm. and my experiences, and mm -hmm. it's like therapy. Mm -hmm. It's like letting it out. You right. know? So I got this pimp side, this hustler side, this mm -hmm. this thug side, if you want to call it. Yeah. And I got this this enlightened mm -hmm. side of it as well. Yeah. So to avoid putting myself in either one of these boxes, mm -hmm. I sequence my music mm -hmm. so that. All right, if you push play on the first track and you're in the conscious music, you're going to like it. If you're not in the conscious music, you push skip, track two is for you, probably. So you're kidding for a white? Yeah, for, every, for, for everyone, basically. That can relate to me. Yeah. Wherever I can reach. Mm -hmm. The conscious music, the positive music, just, you know, it just, it just stood out anyway. Right. So I, get, yeah. I still get the same feedback, you know, I can tell. I'm getting put in a, a conscious mm -hmm. box in a way. Yeah, because I think the underlying message beneath the song, the CD that I listen to, it's fairly. I, I see someone who is deep and conscious, yeah. and it's it's it talk about the history and life experiences that I can relate to. Right. And I'm sure that is why you sell so many CDs so far. Many yeah. people can relate to it. A lot of people well. that don't even like hip hop, like my music. I, exactly, because yeah. I don't. I really, well, I'm not going to say I don't, but I don't normally listen, so I, I don't follow up on it. But I, I, I spent the time and I listened to it, and I really think it's a really good CD. I really enjoyed listening to it. I was like, wow, this makes sense. Respect. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate so your next mu um, CD is coming out January, January, January 1st, 1st, 2019. 2019. Shit, sure, we'll the same. Yeah, and is it similar to what's this up now, or do nah, you want to give us a sneak peek? <laughs> <laughs> I won't be the same. Yeah, sure won't be do the you same. want to give us a sneak peek into yeah. what it, what it's, it's about? Yeah, it's more so like um, it's a struggle, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think it's my best music because it's humble. Yeah. You know, I'm a real arrogant, cocky person, and when I get to writing, mm -hmm. I believe so. Mm -hmm. But for for I, I don't I'm uh, I'm expressing myself in, from a, a, a humble state mm -hmm. in a way like I've struggled I've, I've been poor I'm poor now right you know I've slept but you're rich in spirit rich in spirit. and rich in passion and, and that's, that's the beginning of yeah, of wealth yeah. and, oh, and, that's and I, didn't, wealth. I didn't recognize that or appreciate that until others started pointing it out to yeah, me yeah yeah you know? you're wealthy it doesn't yeah. take money to be exactly. wealthy yeah so you yeah, see so you're, you're you're wealthy I'm, I think. I'm appreciating this whole experience. And um, mm -hmm. just based on the feedback from people who follow me on, on my Instagram, mm -hmm. which is at DJ Rights, yeah. um, D I I J A Y Rights, right. or whatever, I feel like I owe my those people, my fans, mm -hmm. some conscious, some consciousness. I got something to talk about, so it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be a it's gonna be a a variety yeah. of uh, different.
types of. Uh, okay. So, DJ, is what advice do you have for your younger self or young people um, today that are out there in the streets? Yeah. Follow your dreams, man. Chase, tap into your gifts. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you're going through in life, just you know, be positive mm -hmm. because whatever, you, like I said, life is abundant. Whatever yeah. you, whatever you desire or you need or you want, mm -hmm. is here for you. Mm -hmm. You just have to, you know, what I'm saying, keep your your spirit intact so you can recognize what's going on mm -hmm. as it's happening. Mm -hmm. And if you got some type of talent, monetize your talents and step out there in the world fearless mm -hmm. and sell your product. You can be a customer service agent at Walgreens, a cashier. But Walgreens is a salesman, you know, mm -hmm. they depend on sales, right. you know, sales make the world go around and it's going to be pressure either way. You got pressure working at the cash register, your supervisor not like you and firing your ass and then you got pressure of, damn, if nobody buy nothing up out of here, it's going to be, you're going to be in trouble too. But mm -hmm. I worked at a Walgreens as long as as an example. Okay. I made $7.50, that's all I was going to get. Right. I count my register, they got $3,000 a night, $5,000 a night, $2,000 a night. Mm -hmm. So your, your, your full potential is unlimited. Mm -hmm. And you just have to be fearless, like, like I had to, to mm -hmm. get out there and understand that mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's out there for all of us. All of us, just you know to tap into it. Yeah. Working yourself, it working yeah. yourself. Create something that your children don't have to even, a job shouldn't even be in their mind. I don't even know what that is in a way. You leave yeah. something behind for them and or you can guide them into doing you know, for themselves as well. Everybody got something they can offer to the world. Yeah, you know, tap into the creativity and the gift and the passion. And be fearless, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just don't be scared, you feel me? And the more that you, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. stand in front of your fear and face them, the more fearless you become. Right, right. Because uh, somehow I think that your fear is there, can be used as a drive to push you to move forward once you execute and take action and face it. Yeah. When it becomes a problem, when you crumble under it or step back or you retreat. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, look, at, I look at fear and I look at it. I, I, I look forward to pressure now. Mm -hmm. I look at it like a greater opportunity. Embrace for me to, it. Yeah, now it's another opportunity for me to grow my faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. So, do you want to tell our viewers where we can find you yeah. again? You can find me on my Instagram, man. You know, I'm an Instagram cat. You know, I like Instagram. You can uh, hit me at DJ Rights, D I R J A Y Rights, W R I T E S. I got Snapchat, Twitter. Facebook or on the same names and I ain't posted nothing yet. But yeah, do you have anything? January first I'll be I'll be working on working that whole little social media thing too. You know what I'm saying? We we're gonna keep it in the street too. You're gonna see me somewhere, wherever you are in the world, I will be there on on one of them blocks. Okay. So it's it's really a pleasure having you and thanks for sharing your story. Appreciate and I really it. look forward to your new C D that's coming out January first, yeah. twenty nineteen. I'm same. really gonna get one. And I'm, I'll follow you on your social media Respect. platform. Appreciate it. Thank you.